Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. I haven't made a video, a complete video. Uh, so this is going to be another video on GNU Radio. And this video is going to be all about clipping. Uh, clipping action. So we're going to try to demonstrate a clipping action uh, using GNU Radio Companion. For that, I have a small graph, flow graph. I'll walk you through the graph and we'll go with this. What is basically a clipping action? What I have in my mind is this. Uh, let's say you have an amplifier and uh, after you provide a biasing to your amplifier, let's say if it's an op amp based amplifier, let's say you have a biasing of plus and minus 10 volts. The amplifier is going to amplify signal up to 80 percent or some in different books is different value, 80 percent of whatever the biasing is. After that, no matter how much power you provide or how much signal you will give to the input of your amplifier, it's not going to change much. It's going to perform that clipping action. So we're going to look at that clipping action uh, using GNU Radio. For that, I have a simple flow graph. Let's walk. Let me walk you through this flow graph. All right. Uh, so I have a couple of variables. I'm using a noise source because I want to introduce noise. I'm passing this noise through a bandpass filter that has a bandwidth from low cutoff frequency of 3.3 and 34, uh, high cutoff frequency at 34 kilohertz. I'm adding a signal, which is going to be my actual signal, where I'm going to look at the signal. On this signal, I'm going to perform my clipping action. Both of these are added together. I can introduce noise. I can, I'm can. i controlling this noise variably uh, using the noise power amplitude. As you can see it from here. So I'm going to variably control this using a GUI range slider. And then signal power is also being controlled by a range slider. And after that, uh, the output of this is going to a throttle block. And after this throttle block, the input is going, the output of that throttle block is also going to my time sink. And this output is going to something, a block called rail block. This rail block is the one that is going to perform clipping. What that clipping is going to be is going to have a low clipping value and a high clipping value. Let's say if I want to have a clipping value of positive 1 to minus 1. Any, any voltage value, incoming signal that is above that is going to start clipping that signal. That's what that means. That is being controlled by a variable called negative clipping and positive clipping. I have set a value of this variably so I can control this plus and minus, so, which means basically what it means, my signal will remain between 1 and minus 1. In order to achieve this, I'm also having a, a constant source that is, has an amplitude of 1, which is going to be my positive clipping, uh, which will actually give me a line which shows that it is at about 1, 1, 1 volts. And I have a negative clipping, which is another signal source, a constant signal source that will have a negative clipping on it. Now, I have, def I have, you can use, so this is being controlled by a chooser block where you, where you'll have, you will see the different drop down menu where you will have different clipping values of one, two, three, four, five. And that is being controlled by this clipping box. Uh, it's going to be a combination of boxes or it's going to be a drop down box. That's about it. Your center frequency is being controlled by a central flow graph. Even though I disabled this, there's nothing happening. And you have a bandwidth control that is being used right here at this particular point. So that's about it. So let, let me go with this flow graph. Nothing fancy is going on. This is the actual signal where I'm going to perform clipping. I'm going to try to increase the power. I'm going to try to introduce the noise. And, and I'm going to see the clipping action based on the values that I set using my veil. And these are the two constant values which, which will provide a reference for me. The output of my rail is going to the histogram sync. It's also going into a uh, frequency sync. It's also going into my time sync. My time sync has four inputs. Uh, that is, one is coming from my rail output, one is coming from my throttle block, one is coming from these constant sources. So let's just look at it. Look at the flow graph and try to understand what the output is. Now, when I play this flow graph, okay, right now, my signal strength, my signal power is zero. This is what was representing my signal power, my incoming signal. This is representing my incoming frequency. This is just center frequency. This is not doing much. It's supposed to show value, but I don't know why it's not showing. But let's just leave it as is. And this is where the clipping action is. So if you remember it from my flow graph, if you look at it, these are the two constant sources. One is positive one, one is negative one. So right now it's positive one and negative one. When I change this clipping value to two, now this value will be at two minus two, three 
minus 3. So any signal that is going to be above 1 volt is going to have a clipping action. That's what it means. All right. And this is my histogram sync. So right now the signal strength is quite low. So nothing is happening. And there's no noise because that's why I'm also in my flow graph. I was also adding noise to show what will be the effect of noise on my signal. Uh, so let's just try to increase my signal power a little bit. As you can gradually see, if I have a signal strength of negative 125, uh, that's the power that you will start seeing your signal. All right, let me just increase it a little bit more. And you will also see the spectrum, uh, also see the time sync as well. Why? Because time sync has four inputs. You have an actual signal, the added signal that is going in as an input. Then you have a real output. Then you have your constant sources for positive one, negative one, or whatever the value is. So I said, so these are the four things that you're seeing. So let me just increase more. Let me just do a little bit more. As you can start seeing, you can start visualizing the signal. Uh, this is in terms of power. So this is about negative 25 dBm. This is quite low, but you can start seeing my signal here. So this is representing by positive one constant source. This is minus one constant source. You have an actual signal, which is your input signal, and you have a clipping action that will take place in red. So when I start increasing, Okay, still below one, there's no clipping action. Clipping action means it will start converting into a square wave signal. Uh, let me do it more. All right, here we go. So right now, as you can clearly see, this is my input signal. This is still below one. Over here, over here, this is the spectrum output and this is the flow graph, uh, histogram. Uh, this is my max value, which is positive one. So now as, as soon as I start increasing power, and this is the input. So now as you can clearly see, the input is way above my clipping action, which is the clipping value, which is one. So when I use an input, sorry, let me turn on my clipping action. So this is what's my actual signal, and this is the clip version of my signal. This is my actual signal, and in red, that's the clipping action that is taking place. Now, let me just... So no matter how much I increase, it is remaining within that value. Now, look what happens. When the clipping action is not performed, let's look at it right here. You are just basically seeing your signal at, it should be at around 19 kilohertz. Now, when I, st when I start increasing power and it leaves that threshold which is being set by the clipper, what will happen? It will start whenever even in an amplifier when it start clipping it actually clips that signal chop that signal half start chopping that signal and that signal would sort of become like a square wave as soon as it's become flat you will see the harmonics start being generated the harmonics started generated why because it's becoming more and more like a square wave that's why we sometimes we use in oscillators we take that signal and we try to clip it and we'll convert that into a square wave signal so let me just increase this more so the closer it's becoming sort of like a square signal you can start seeing the harmonics uh, which is associated with uh, with this clipping action now so this is let me turn on everything so this is my input signal all right this is my clipper at one now I can change this. When my signal is this, I can change this clipping action to 2. Still, my signal is quite high. It still is going above the clipping action. When I want to remove this clipping action, I'm just going to let's try 3. All right. So it's, it's about right here. At about 3, we're good to go. Anything above than that, let's say 4. So it's right here. It's still under that threshold value. Let me go somewhere around 2. You can see that. My signal is quite high, input signal is quite high, so it's, uh, the clipping action is being performed here. Now, what will happen is start, when I start increasing noise? What happened when I start increasing noise now? Uh, let me just start increasing noise. You will see the disruption in your signal as well. Noise is quite low at negative 100. Let's start increasing noise. All right, the clipping action is still remains the same, but as you can see, the harmonics are going away, and my noise is like taking over my signal. And it should start taking over your signal, my input signal, when I start increasing noise. 
Alright, so this is this is where my noise floor is. My noise floor has jumped as close to this. So that's the basic idea regarding clipping and um, the clipping action that or in amplifier we normally call that saturation saturation because the amplifier in a saturated position and of course when we do two-tone testing with my signals as well you will also see the same effect of saturation that no matter how much you increase the input now there's no increase in voltages and this is what the clipping action looked like so i hope you like the small tutorial on the demonstration of clipping effect uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.